Basketball fans, it's over. It's the final episode of The Hangout for season one. King James could not do it. The Spurs are your 2014 NBA champion. Welcome to The Hangout. I am Mikhail Augustine. As always, we continue to talk junk about the game we love so much, the game of hoops here on The Hangout. NBA TV's favorite show, of course, we have um, a familiar guest, Nadine at Sports Nation. Nadine Liverpool, my good friend, thank you for joining us. No problem. I know Port uh, Portugal is struggling right now. Let's uh, not talk let's, about okay, that. Yeah, let's, let's not talk about that. No World Cup soccer on this show. No. Uh, my man Trix, uh, who is convinced that Kawhi Leonard is from Rexdale. From Rexdale, man. <laughs> Yo, that, he's, if he's from Rexdale, I know he plays dominoes. You can't. He, he didn't even shake the man's hand after he took the trophy. Go on, <laughs> and big shouts out to Hoop Dogs at Hoop Dogs on Twitter. That's my man Darren Andrade, veteran sports reporter and writer. Thank you for joining us. What's up? You seem a little choked up over. Uh, well, for first off, the most important thing is this is the final episode of the Hangout for our playoff season run. But we got to talk about what we saw on the floor. I'm thankful Trix is here because he says he's been to a lot of debates over this situation. <laughs> San Antonio Spurs took it. Hot. My first question about this series is, did the San Antonio Spurs impress you, Trix? Or did the Miami Heat depress you? Um, look, I don't like the Spurs, but I have to give props where props is due, man. They played, I've never seen basketball played that nice in a long time since, like, the Bulls and Lakers back in the day. Like, they actually... I was sitting there going, the, the Heat actually have no answers for these guys. Well, I got to disagree on one thing. I think the Spurs have played like this for a long time. This good? Uh, well, you know what? They've had the system yeah, and they've had the Spurs. Right. When you, I think you're seeing the big three at the end of something where, you know, everybody loves the old guys, everybody, but they've been old for a while, but they've been playing in the same system for a while. And I think this system with these three, with Kyrie Leonard, hit its peak. Shout out to Patty Mills for that third quarter. Can I just say that? That was impressive. Energizer Bunny. Yeah, like, I, like I don't think Mario Chalmers had five? 14 points in the series. Mario Chalmers Patty Mills plays who? ball? That's what he does. Yeah, he points. still plays basketball? <laughs> I thought they just found some guy outside that was giving out signs and they say, yo, come play for us. <laughs> Tony Douglas when He's a ball player? Okay, all right, Nadine, this one's for you. Were you surprised with the general ineffectiveness and inability to fight back that you saw from a team that we consider to be the most dominant team of this generation, the Miami Heat? Well, the thing is, with the Heat, they never really made any adjustments to their roster from last season. Absolutely, you know I agree. I mean? And they, I, I look at them, I'm like, good, I'm glad you lost. You guys are cocky enough to think <laughs> that you guys can come back the next year and just have the same team and just smash teams. Like, no, it's not going to work that way. Right. So, like, they didn't but, but the Spurs, Beasley, the, what's, what's he doing? The, well, right? the, I mean, that's a white flag if I ever saw him. When Beasley hits the court, it's like game over. But, you know, the, the Spurs didn't make a ton of adjustments in terms of personnel well, either. There was a lot of player growth. Growth, and that was the key there, that you can't get in Miami. They're too old. You're not going to get growth. You're going to get what but, they are. Okay, before you chime in, is that part of the style too? Because we know LeBron has the ball a lot. Dwayne, well, let's not talk about Dwayne Wade. But like, they're not getting the ball a lot like the other San Antonio Spurs players are to get those opportunities. Right, it, it's a different system, equal opportunity system. They recognize the big three more in Miami than they do on other teams. Yes. But I just feel like, you know, the the, the A, there was no, like you said, there was no room for growth with that Spurs team. He's looking for help. They can't help him. They're on the downward spiral. Now, that's why his future is cloudy in Miami. And you've got, it's got to be cloudy when you're looking at the age on the roster. Why, why, why is everybody ignoring the fact that Miami just, they didn't have a good coach? I don't, I don't. Care okay, won championships. All right, here we go. Who I, is to blame? I, I I do blame the coaching system because first of all, I know when you win championships with sheer talent, it makes you look good as a coach. So yes. nobody says anything. But the bottom line is there was no system in Miami, none. That's why they couldn't withstand runs. That's why they couldn't hold leads. They had no identity. They had no identity. Run. They had two guys that they were relying on, one in particular who did everything, and they had a subpar Bosch. They had no point guard, no charmers. And Ray they had Allen. a bunch of guys that they Ray went Ray Allen. In. Yeah, Ray Allen started. Did you know did things here and there, but they had a bunch of guys that didn't even utilize. They went and yeah, picked like up all these guys in the off season like, that they didn't even use. Why did you get Beasley? Oh, if you're not going to use Beasley, him. Odom, what are you Odin. doing with him? Yeah, you, what are you, you doing with these guys? The bench, man. That's that speaks to the problem because the bench was so lack. Like, it was just so out of the picture. When you look at the Spurs, their depth, and you talk about growth within their depth, I mean, from Corey Joseph to the top of the... To the Rexdale man. <laughs> to, to the Rexdale man. They have young depth that's growing, and that was the difference. Shooters, shooters was the big difference in this series. Okay, when we talk Miami Heat, we have to talk LeBron James. Mm -mm. My young boy, Patty Choi, came in today. I was mad at him because he came in and he said, oh, well, LeBron James needed to do more. I'm not sure... <laughs> LeBron James could have done more. 
Who begs to differ? Nadine, I'll throw this one at you. Are you are you satisfied with the performance LeBron James I, had? In the past? I am personally satisfied with the way LeBron played. Because at the end of the day, the reason that they won last year is because he had those other players stepping up. He had Norris Cole stepping up and Shane Battier and Richard Lewis and Birdman. None of those guys could hit a three to save their life. No, I, I don't. I don't, I don't no, I know. But still, like, I think LeBron played up to his ability. All right, well, looking at the numbers, an average of 28 points per game, shooting damn near 60%. He's above 50% from three, giving you close to eight rebounds, yeah. four assists, two steals. Good jeez. Why are we, why are people, why am I looking on Twitter and, and social medias and everyone's dissing the one guy who did yeah. anything consistently the entire playoffs for this team? Why are you making fun of that guy? Why are you calling him soft because he cramped up? Understand, people always like to compare him to Kobe and Kobe would have done this and Kobe would have done that, but Kobe had a system. Kobe had players around him. Kobe was great among those players and in that system, but he had that. LeBron had nothing like last night in his entire series. He had nothing. He had to do everything himself every night. One man can only do so much. Yeah, he's the lightning rod. You know, when they win, he's going to get all the praise. And, and do, you know, the, the, the way the sports world is, you're going to get, you know, dumped on when you, uh, when, when you lose. But, you know, I, I just look at LeBron as he did all he did. This is the same reason why he left Cleveland. Let's yes. face it. Yes. He didn't have the help. He did all he could there. He had touched his, his, his peak. The same thing's happening in Miami right now. I want, I want to throw one thing out here right now about this whole LeBron James situation. Does Pat Riley get any blame because we gave Pat Riley a lot of props for bringing in three superstars, max contracts, but what that did was, and you guys were talking about it earlier, it really strangled this team's ability to put pieces around them. It really strangled the growth of the rest of the players and the big three model that's now sweeping the NBA is I think it's being put into question a little bit after what you've seen after three years with this Heat team. Well, even when he had the three players, I still said that first he needed to get a coach that can coach the three players. You needed to build um, a system around the guys who couldn't do anything, like the, the Ray Allens and the Haslams yes. and, the, and the Mario Chalmers. If you had a coach in place to help that guy grow, look what happened with Quan Leonard. He went there last year and he, you know, he didn't win, but he had a coach to help him build up. And look, look at him now. He's the finals MVP. D there was nothing like that in Miami. Right. Nothing. Another guy we got to address. Um, Darren, I'll throw this one to you. Dwyan Wad. <laughs> okay. Jeez. What's happening? Are there? we mangling his name like he <laughs> got mangled? Like, we're just mangling the guy now? It isn't. Wow. He waded into oblivion. Shouts out to Michael Bailey with the titles for our boards. <laughs> 15 points, 43% yeah. from the field. Yeah. I mean, I blame Gabby or you. Listen, he, you know, he's like the, the the Iverson of the new generation. In in this. In what? He banged up his style of play yes. early on in his Agreed. career. Banged up his body so much that you know when you look at the Spurs and we talk about time management and coaching yep. and the way they brought along their players, their older age. But you look at this now, and and this is a guy, and this is why I think Riley sort of knew what he had. A little window. Get the best player in the world, put him with my guys last couple of years, and let them run. Because let's face it, Wade is not ever going to be the player that he was. And Qu this series showed it. Quickly, will, he, will, will Wade Wade ever return to NBA Superstar? No, because it's Gabrielle Union's fault. <laughs> no, you see how fine that girl is? Gabrielle <laughs> Union's fault. What do you say, distraction? You're not going to play ball properly with that girl in front of you. No. Maybe, unfortunately, Trix has not left you any time to chime in on this <laughs> subject. I'll just say this. At least Allen Iverson had a jump shot. Dwyane... Where's your jump shot? We will be back with more on The Hangout. It's been very disrespectful on the couch today. The Spurs just won a championship, and we spent a whole segment talking about the heat. So when we return, we talk about your world champion, San Antonio Spurs.